Hi everyone, this is Victoria Campisi with 1851 Franchise, and today I'm here with Gary Preveno of FranNet. Thank you so much for joining us today, Gary. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. So let's just jump right into it. What makes you successful as a franchise broker? I, I, I th there's a number of things. I, I think the most important thing um, is focusing on the right transaction for the client, not a transaction. Um, to me, it's not a successful relationship for the franchise or on the franchisee unless um, the person is able to achieve their financial and lifestyle goals, Victoria. So that means for me as a broker, I take a lot of time with my clients to upfront what are what are their skills, what are their skill gaps? Because if they have gaps, the franchisor has to be able to bridge those gaps through coaching, training systems, and processes. Um, what are their financial and lifestyle goals that they want to achieve through business ownership? All those different elements. So I have a foundation of what they want to achieve. Then the next part is making sure that the franchisors I introduce, there's enough franchisees in that system achieving at or above the level the client wants to achieve, because that means it can be done. It doesn't mean the client can do it. That's where coaching training systems and that's where the research comes in. So the third part, I think the most important part of the work we do is helping the client understand what it takes to run um, a business and the particular business that they want to get to. And it takes several weeks of, of coaching the client along the way. It's not just, hey, I can, I can earn that kind of money. I can have that kind of lifestyle. What is the work it takes to achieve at that level? Because that's what they've got to understand. Great. What advice do you have for people wanting to become franchise owners? Uh, the, the, there's a number of elements here. It's tied part and part to the, the first answer. A lot of times people go online or they go to the franchise or wherever, and they're looking for that. I'll know when I say, ah, oh, that's the one. And it doesn't happen very often because the companies that show up the most are the ones that invest the most in marketing, not necessarily the best companies. And it might not anywhere be anywhere near what the, the franchisee has the skill set to do or that prospective franchisee. So it comes back to first defining and crystallizing what they bring to the table. What, like, what is their why? And, you know, that it's, and, and what is their why not? What are they moving away from that they want to solve in their life? What are they moving towards in their life that they want to achieve? So there, there's the emotional element that um, there's the passion element. A lot of people, they, you know, follow your passion, the, um, it, the money will follow. Well, no, uh, the passion is misaligned passion if they, if they don't do that properly. The passion has to be for the work it takes to put the product or service in the customer's hands. Um, they have to believe in the value proposition of that product or service. But if if they want to build a business, build an enterprise, then they probably shouldn't be the ones doing the work. They need to be overseeing the team to do the work. So it's, it's the passion has to be for the core functions that drive the success of the business. And then come, that's when the, the, all the skills and what are, what are the three primary resources to me? How much time are they putting into the business? And what is the structure of that time, like on a week-to-week -week basis? If you have a young family, you probably want to protect your evenings and weekends. So that eliminates a bunch of options. Um, how much money, uh, initial upfront and, and all of that? What is their initial investment and their exposure to risk? And then the transferable, leverageable skills and their skill gaps. Um, they have to know what they're good at. They have to know what they're not good at. And can they maximize through the business what they're good at? Um, and can they, does the business avoid the gaps or if they have uh, skill gaps as the franchise or build it? So it's that foundation first. And the other advice I would have is give themselves time. They've waited this long to, to get into business, however many months or years they've been thinking about it. And now they're going to be actively investing in research. Two to three months of, of 10 to 15 hours a week is what they should be committing. If somebody's trying to rush them in a decision in four to six weeks, that's that's a big caution. They, they you know, the timing is wrong, everything else is wrong. Great. What does winning look like for you? Oh boy. Um that, 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 you know, there's a number of different things. First and foremost, from the client, the client has bought, you know, I, I've, I've worked with over 2000 clients, myself and my team over 20 years. So when I see clients um, achieving or overachieving their goals, um, like knocking it out of the park, that's really exciting. They come back to me. One of my clients said, Gary, thank you for giving me 17 years of my life back. I, I, I would be here in corporate. I wouldn't be anywhere near as successful. So those types of stories. Um, the for me, it's um, always what are my short term, mid term, long term goals. I have a dream list, Victoria, and every year I take stuff off my dream list and I put it into my goals list. So, it, if if I put it on my goals list, 
I've got to commit to doing it. Like for example, I just wrote a book. Um, it came out in in uh, March. I put that on my dream list in the '90s, and I finally got to it. So, <laughs> you know that that's me winning. Um, and the balance between work and and life. I have a great life. I have a great partner. We do a lot of travel. So you have to enjoy um, the the uh, the labor that you did, the fruits of your labor. So celebrating along the way and having the wins and enjoying the wins. Awesome. What advice do you have for franchisors wanting your help on awarding more franchisees? The, the, the first thing I would say to any franchisor is have a clear idea of who your ideal franchisee avatar is. Um, emerging franchisors, they're figuring that out. Um, the B, you know, to me, the franchisor's role, especially people in charge of development and franchise recruiting, their number one role is to protect the franchisor. What does that mean? It means not letting the wrong people in. Uh, it should be, they should have a, a, a solid process, taking every prospect through that process where they can see how the prospect shows up during the franchise awarding, because it's mutually evaluation, so it's awarding, not selling franchises. And if somebody is not following the system and processes, that's probably an indicator that they're not going to follow some of the systems and process of franchisee. That's a warning sign. So having an avatar of what the individual ideal franchisee looks like, um, having solid recruiting processes, um, and then the um, communication um, and follow-up with the, with the client. And if they're working with brokers, keeping us informed of where they're at um, during the process. And don't be afraid of saying no. We don't like no's as brokers, but I, I personally respect a no. If, I've had a client recently this year that went to Discovery Day and it got turned down at discovery because there was some form of align misalignment. So that tells me the franchisor is careful about who they let in. I think that's that they really have to do that. Um, and, and have the last area, I would say just on, 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 on from this medium, there's a lot of other um, points. I don't think we have the time is, is have multiple channels. I don't rely on one channel. Uh, just you're, you're constantly looking at it. Um, and that actually, I just thought of another one, which is validation. Understand what our clients are going to hear from your existing franchisees. And if you have validation issues on, on unhappy franchisees, get those fixed, support the franchisees. That's, that's really, really strong. Great. How can franchisers better communicate with you? Um, the... I think there's a, there's a there's a few different elements. Uh, part of it, what we call frick and frack. As as our clients are making progress, we like to um, understand what the progress is. Where are they struggling? What are they are they missing gaps of information, um, or are they doing things slightly off process? It's my job to coach my client to to get that information. Um, understanding at the very before we ever start putting clients in front of them, what their franchisee avatar is, who their ideal um, franchisee is. What is the business opportunity? What is the work it takes to create success in that business? And unit economics. We can't talk to our clients because of earnings claims and disclosure laws. We can't share with our clients what th those are. But if my client comes to me and says, I have a goal of earning $150,000 a year by the end of year two, I've got to know there's enough franchisees in that system who are doing that and beyond. So, so whatever it is, I need to understand what the opportunity is, what it takes to achieve, staffing levels, all those different elements, and then what the financial and lifestyle outcomes are. So I think uh, open communication along the way. Um, and I think the other is coming back to advice for the franchisors, knowing what the validation is. Um, if we're going to, if there, there's going to be some validation speed bumps, I want to know ahead of time so that I can be aware of that and is it systemic or is it a, a few unique franchisees? I just pre-frame the, the, so that the client is aware of it. And the way to get over, overcome validation issues is better field coaching. Um, that goes back to the previous question, what advice do I have? They, they should be focusing on unit economics and helping franchisees achieve the most that they can. Um, I would put more dollars into field coaching um, than for a lot of franchisors. Perfect. Well, that's everything I have for you, Gary. Thanks so much for your time and have a great day. Thank you, you as well.